in this video clip, we're going to take a look again at the MIT OpenCourseWare. There is, um, and I've left the link uh, to the course. Now, this was set up in R, and previously I had matched the implementation of the statistical Somalia, uh, that example that's available in MIT OpenCourseWare. Um, and you can track back, you can get back using that hyperlink and also the implementation then of that same R code in Google Colab, which will also run R. This instance, I want to run Python, but just take the same example and to see, can I replicate uh, what I obtained in R in Python? The, uh, if you want to get the um, video clip also will be available um, at this uh, web link and um, I will leave a link to this uh, collab in the hyperlink below the YouTube video clip also. So that each bit is interrelated. So in this, there was uh, two data sets, a very small data set with two rows and then a slightly bigger one with 25 rows. And basically the data here is related to um, the price of wine uh, year, the price here is in, in logarithms, uh, the winter rainfall, the average growing season temperature, uh, rain at harvest time, uh, the age of the wine, and then Fran France's population. So we're trying to explain the price and uh, price here is, uh, I suppose, a proxy for quality. Um, so uh, there's a little bit of background. I've explored that in the previous video clip, so maybe I won't labor too much here. The key thing I want to do is just implement. Now I've already executed the code, but um, may well be um, you don't have uh, the data available, right? Normally when you open up this um, Google Colab, you won't have the data set that we require. So to get the data set, just basically follow this link. So for the wine CSV, we won't use the test here in this uh, example, but we just uh, follow link and um, you can just uh, download, right? Download, and then it, it'll come up as a CSV file. Now it'll come up as wine four for me because I've downloaded it already three times. Um, to upload, uh, to upload, uh, the uh, data, then we go to just come here to uh, now. Uh, typically, when you open up, um, when you see the uh, and open the Google Colab, when it opens, it may open um, where basically you won't see everything. So you may have to manipulate a little bit what's going on here. So, for instance, um, you might find that. Um, and when we look at the files that you have here, um, you might see, you have to look for content, right? And, um, okay, but we need to load in here. So we have to find that folder content, and then you need to upload. And then you've got to uh, look for that CSV file and just see where you had downloaded to. Now we had downloaded to my downloads, but I have it in a separate, same file here, CSV extension, and I just upload, right? And it's only available then, we won't see it immediately, actually when we open, it, it, it is now there, but there's a little bit of latency between uploading and then seeing it appear underneath here. So it should be in this folder, and uh, it should be, again, the wine CSV, and that's the name of uh, the file that we have here, right? Okay. So, um, okay, we have uploaded our data, then let's run and hopefully it'll read in. So the wine uh, is read in and uh, let's run to see, do we have the information available on the wine? Yes, so we can see each of the columns, year, price, winter, average growing season, temperature, harvest rain, age, it's there. And there's only 25 entries, 25 uh, rows in all. Uh, the information then contained is, again, we're just looking at integer float. Uh, and then if we want to see just the five, first five 
uh, rows here of the data is only 25 and all we can see year price winter rain and so on okay now uh, basically like what we had done before and like what's up in the MIT Somalia an introduction to linear regression we just want to run a couple of regressions here I'm not going to use um, SK learn linear model import linear regression I'm going to use stats model dot formula dot api as smf right and um so we need to if we're using that format and that library then we define the relationship i'm going to regress uh, the average growing temperature average growing season temperature onto price uh, the thinking is that the temperature over the growing season uh, will enhance the quality and just a higher price. So we, we hope to see a positive relationship here. We define the formula, then we run the OLS model formula using the wine data set. And then we're going to print out the model, the summary of the model. And that produces then this OLS estimation. And if you check against the results on the MIT, open course where you'll see we're getting the same results uh, from model one as their model one. And again, uh, we then go from a simple regression to a multiple regression. And we say, okay, we get, if we look at the R squared here, um, it's, uh, it's not extremely high, it's not too bad, but the R squares is, uh, could be improved. And, um, when I look for it here, um, okay, so I have to be careful here. Let's just make sure that it's AGST being regressed on price. That's the formula, run this again, and that we have a single explanatory variable. We have an intercept and the coefficient on the average growing season temperature, it's positive, which means as we increase the growing season temperature, we expect to see a higher price uh, for the wine. Uh, when we examine the R squared, it's 0 0.41. Again, this is consistent with the model one from the uh, MIT Open Courseware. Um, then they suggest that we probably should include in the harvest rainfall. Harvest rain basically is not the rain during the, this growing season, it's at the end and maybe uh, that makes conditions less than optimal for harvesting. And what we observe is if there's high rainfall at harvest time, that tends to have a negative effect, small, but still, uh, um, uh, it's still noticeable, right? Um, now, again, it depends on the quantities here. I think if we look at the data for uh, the harvest rain, it's okay, typically in the hundreds. Okay, so we have to be careful how we interpret that, the coefficient on this as opposed to the coefficient on this. So even though small, right, uh, we would say uh, that's not inconsequential. Um, uh, for statistical sin significance, we're looking at the t-values here, uh, way in excess of two, right, for both of the independent variables. And then the p-value is uh, less than 0 0.05. Okay, so I think uh, we can say that is, uh, we're happy with statistical significance for these two independent uh, variables. That might then encourage us to develop a model tree consistent with uh, MIT OpenCourseWare, then get our output, make sure we have the tree, sorry, the one, one, two, three, four, five. We actually have the full set of the variables regressed. Um, the T values, uh, not great for these two. Uh, we should be less than 0 0.05. And the P values, uh, the T value, uh, we normally would expect to be greater than two. We don't find that. Maybe we should exclude something. French population may not be a good explanatory variable. It's a bit exogenous. So we throw that out and now we estimate model four. We run that again. And uh, what do we find? Um, interestingly, when we exclude uh, the French population, 
all the t-values and the coefficients now exceed uh, 2 and the p-values are less than 0 0.05 um, and we have good r squared uh, 0 0.79 that's consistent with MIT open courseware output. Uh, we should be um, reasonably happy with that model, so much so that it provides evidence that if you want to predict the quality of the wine, uh, maybe we don't need uh, the sommeliers, maybe their skill set uh, is um, something that uh, that uh, maybe a statistical analysis provides uh, um, uh, insights that are equally worthy. Um, and um, let's not say we don't need sommelier, um, but uh, statistical analysis uh, is definitely a big help, right? So don't want to offend anybody in that community. And I don't, I'm not a wine guru, guru, so don't want to really make too many sweeping statements like that. And uh, just to bring up then the correlation matrix, uh, it's just the name of the data set dot core, close the brackets. And uh, we can see that when we look at price, um, there is a positive relationship with winter rain. There's a positive relationship with um, average growing season temperature, negative relationship uh, between quality, price, stroke, quality uh, with harvest rain, uh, the older the Bordeaux become, uh, generally um, we have um, uh, more value being added. Um, and then the French population here, there's a negative relationship, but this is a slightly exogenous variable. It's not uh, endogenous to the wine, maybe in terms of demand or something, if the population increases, there's bigger demand for wine. Um, but uh, we found that it wasn't, uh, when we included it in the regression model tree, it didn't really enhance the overall performance. And um, so, but that relate that correlation is there. It's a negative correlation. Um, and maybe what we're finding is age and the French population, there's some kind of link because we know there's a trend towards population growth. Uh, over time. Um, so maybe there's something like that that's uh, uh, skewing our results. But it's an interesting um, how we interpret that. It's, it's not clear, of course. Okay, so that's basically it. We've set up in Google Colab uh, using um, in this time, not R, but Python to set out the notebook. And we've run those uh, ordinarily squared regression models and they're consistent with the results we had obtained before. I will leave a link in the uh, below the video to the Google Colab uh, and uh, you can double click and then open it live then in your own computer. Okay.